I've just finished my engineering exams and in this video I'm going to share how I used Anki to study for it and the key setup of how I created them, how I reviewed them. The best thing about Anki is it's free, open source, if you have a computer and an internet connection. And for me it's been like one of the best ways to learn how to learn and to remember what I've understood at the very first stage. And my goal with this video is to share how I did it and document it so it can help you. So the start of this video, I'm going to share my basic setup. So the home screen of Anki on the MacBook. So how I set it up is I have it as like sub decks, as you can see here. So this is my new semester, this semester and how I lay it out is I have one deck for lectures and one deck for past paper questions. And the unique advantage about organizing your Anki like this is say I want to add new flashcards into convection. All I have to do is tap on that, press A, which is for add. And then I can go here and I can add it into that deck for convection. So this is really useful for making it more efficient. Then press D to go back to the home screen. And then another advantage of having sub decks is you can press onto heat conduction. So I wanted to browse through those, press B, and then I can go through all the flashcards that I've made. What I like to do is say this is like this one I didn't really need to know. I'd press command J to suspend it. As you see, it's gone yellow there. So that means it won't show up when I'm reviewing it. So that helps me reduce Anki overload. What I use to stay productive with Anki is I use an app called Rectangle, which helps use keyboard shortcuts to like flip Anki into different positions of the screen much quicker. And Owl OCR, which allows you to like screenshot pieces of text. So say I wanted to screenshot this heat conduction and then I can just paste it directly into the add bar of the window and that makes making flashcards a lot easier than another thing with Anki as you can see my home setup here the two add-ons that I have at the front here is add um, events so you can show you can add an event and it will count down it for you which I like and then you've got heat map here which keeps you accountable of how many reviews you're doing per day um, at the moment, I've taken a couple of days off because I've just finished my exams. And then up here is that if you want to add add-ons, I'll just show you the ones that I use. Um, I keep it very simple. I don't have many. I don't think they're really that useful. On the screen here are like download codes. If you want to download them, they're free. All you have to do is press get add-ons and input the code. Right, now I'm going to explain how I created my flashcards. I only use basic flashcards for my degree because I find them the most effective because it's literally how a flashcard works. You ask a question, then you find the answer. So this is the part one of my new module. So click on that, press A, and then it adds it into that deck. Then what I do is I use the screenshot method to press command G to select over here. Then I can paste the text using OWL OCR. And then what I do is I press command D screenshot all of this and paste it into Anki and then what I'll do is that when I review it I will normally change it to a question and try and to like really interrogate it write it down make a mind map on it and then trying to understand it and then say I really didn't really understand something when I read through it I go over to Anki ask a couple questions like well, what is then I could actually ask it to like find a YouTube video on this then what I would do is I would come here, copy this, and you can press Command Shift Y to paste in that the YouTube video. Then I would watch that YouTube video. If it was any good, I would keep it in here. And then this is using the add-on that somebody created recently, which I had in the start of the video. That's just like really helpful. And then if I still don't understand it, I'll give it some time and then go over it tomorrow. And then that's normally my method of making flashcards it's very quick and effective. I used to use image inclusion, but I found that it's less effective when reviewing because I prefer a more active process. So I found big open ended questions a bit more useful than like single answered because I don't like to have many flashcards. I like to spend more time thinking about what I'm retrieving out of my brain and trying to recall what I'm learning. And then I press command E and then it adds it using the customizable keyboard shortcut. Customizable keyboard shortcuts, this is really useful. I'll show you my settings. How I've got it is that I have, the only thing I changed really 
is that when he goes to add, I have it as control E. So the next part of this video is about how I review my flashcards. So the add-on that I talked about before, which is edit field during review. This is really useful because say when you're reviewing your flashcard, you can change this into a question like what is the nature of the heat conduction? And then you can actually like ask questions with ChatGPT on the side and then maybe get a better question for this flashcard. But when it comes to reviewing my flashcards, my favorite way is to do it on the iPad. And how I do it is I tap onto here and I press here and I press scratch pad. What's great about this is you can write over the past paper question, which I like to do. And then when you've got the answer, which I don't have here, I would do that and I would write quickly the answer. This is a great way to like reference. I like to do my past paper questions where I can like do the question and see the answer instantly. And then what I also do is sometimes have it in split screen mode, like hold on to the question and paste it in here. And then you can actually just like review the, the past paper on something like an app like Freeform or whatever app that you use like Good Notes, and that's like the most efficient way I've found to review my flashcards. And then the third method is where I use my iPad and like paper because I find like having paper and like spreading it around the desk has been like really useful to like really deeply review your flashcards. But using something like a controller where I've made videos of how I set this up has made it like a lot more fun and enjoyable, especially when something like reviewing flashcards can be quite monotonous. It's kind of like manual labor because you're repeating the same things over and over again to help you remember it. How I actually do my flashcards, how I approach it, do I do a specific deck each day, um, a set number of cards in random order, etc. So the first thing is I do like heavy lifting at the very start so that I try and encode it into my head and like understand it at the very start so that it makes it much easier to review it later on. So when I create the flashcards, I show you how I created them and I try and review them very soon afterwards, after watching the lecture, after going through the lecture and I ask hard questions to myself through ChatGPT to understand the understanding. Then I put that onto the back of the flashcards so that I will remember it in the future asking ChatGPT to explain it to you like a three-year-old. For example, in vibrations this semester, I found it really difficult to understand what flutter was inside a wing of a, a, a plane, but it's very similar to like a ruler. So you can have two ways it can fail. When you press the ruler up against itself and it snaps in the middle, and then also if you tap it at the right frequency, it will just like vibrate and it will smash. And like explaining it like a ruler helped me understand it better. So trying to conceptualize it and create little analogies to help you remember things has made a massive difference for me. And then I try and review throughout the week, like on my phone, um, the reviews that come up using Anki's algorithm. But I have to say I'm not always as consistent. I try and do it every day, but I don't review them all, all the time. The second thing that I found really helpful to get through them all is batch reviewing before your exams. So two months before my exams, what I will do is take a couple, two days on like one module and just go through all the lectures, the tutorials, and really like immerse myself in that subject. And then by that time, I will have finished all my lecture material, all the flashcards I've made, and I have done like all the heavy lifting for each week for those modules. And it makes it a much more immersive an interactive experience. With engineering, the most important thing is to do your tutorial questions. So I make sure I go through them at least like five or 10 times before my final exam and go through them like quite slowly and try and to do a ideal solution on my iPad and then send it to my MacBook to put it into the flashcard. And that's like the best way I found to learn is just take a lot, lot longer on the questions, really trying to understand it and asking yourself, all right, I've, I remember seeing that in the lecture. Then you go into your lecture deck using the browse feature and seeing how it relates to the question because applying your knowledge is the best thing that I found to actually remember it and to like remember the flashcards that you've created. And also the main lesson that I want to take away from this video is that I'm creating these resources for myself so that I can download and put them on my Anki in five years and be able to understand what I have created 
And for me, it's this ability to have long-term learning with Anki and remember things over a long period. And that's something that I really want to keep because the engineering degree is not only about getting a first or any of these things. It's about actually truly understanding the world and asking deep questions and remembering the solutions to them. And the best thing about Anki is that you can actually remember that through the long term. So I apply it to many things from my life. I'm trying to learn a language at the moment. It's really helping me just remember vocab words and be able to have a conversation in Polish, which has been like really useful. And I think the most important thing with Anki is take it slow, do a little bit every day and try and be as consistent as possible because that is probably the most easiest way. And I hope this video has helped you guys and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.